Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Knights of the Pageless Library. I'm Bo Knight, and with me, as always, is Ryan Knight. And today, we're taking a look at an Audible original called Body of Proof. And mm -hmm. <laughs> before we get into the book, though, we're going to do our little plugs here. So uh, we, we would hope one of you will email us eventually at some point. I mean, if, <laughs> it'd be nice to get something that wasn't junk mail at kotpl.pod at gmail.com and Twitter, actually, I've been getting this wrong, our page is at Pageless Library. That's that's our Twitter handle if you guys ever wanted to tweet at us, I guess. YouTube, we are at Knights of the Pageless Library and Facebook, we are our Facebook page is Knights of the Pageless Library. So, this Audible original, I'm assuming it came out it came out this month, I guess, right? Uh, like as far as when it was published and everything? Yeah. Uh, that's a good question. I don't actually know 100%. Um, and I'm not going to be able to find it real quick, but let's just go with that. Sure, let's say it just came out this month. I'll make sure I look. And so, so yeah, I'll, I'm going to get into it a little bit. This book was kind of took me by surprise, because I don't think me or Ryan either knew that it is it's nonfiction. It is actually like a documentary, but it is an audiobook. Yeah, and I was completely unaware of that when I because we ended up both just picking one of these books of the six for September because we couldn't get the uh voting process down and I highly doubt anyone would have voted at this point anyways. So we just picked. And I picked Body of Proof because I was just judging a book by its cover, and the cover looked kind of cool. So, but yeah, it is actually like a documentary, and it is done by Daryl Brown and Sophie Ellis, and they are also both the main kind of narrators of the story. And then they do some interviews with other people and some phone call interviews and stuff like that. So this is basically um, like if you were listening to a documentary on the tv this is mostly what you'd be getting <laughs> and i don't know if any of our listeners have ever listened to the podcast serial but it is almost identical to that it, it is just like a five to me this felt like a five-hour podcast i mean i to be i'm gonna be honest with everybody i didn't even listen to the whole thing and because i kind of feel like i didn't need to right and I, okay so well let's talk about it a little bit so this book is it's a documentary about this guy who supposedly murdered this lady, and they're going in and looking at his case to see if he's truly guilty or not, because he says he's not guilty. Obviously, the where this is in England, right, or the UK, I guess. It's in Scotland. Well, he uh, was in Scotland. Right, so their justice system's a little bit different than ours, but it sounds pretty similar. At least I assume that's where it is, because, yeah, they kept saying, like, the Scottish whatever, all that stuff was where it was all going down but it says it was in edinburgh which i thought was in the uk now i'm gonna look like an idiot because i don't know where that's at edinburgh um yeah it's it's over in the uk so yeah and wow that shows you how much i know edinburgh is the capital of scotland so i was correct the first time <laughs> i didn't um, know that yeah, so this all takes place in Scotland. Um, the gentleman that they are talking to, like Bo said, was accused of a murder. And these two, Daryl Brown and Sophie Ellis, are like journalists. And they are kind of looking at this case after the fact to see like if the cops missed anything. The thing that I found kind of weird is this is like eight years later. It, the murder took place in like 2011. Or... I, we say murder. They don't know that because there's no body still. Oh, see, I didn't get to that part where there's no body. Yeah, so because you didn't finish it, no, there's still no body. They never even found a body, which is why it was weird that they were able to convict him on based on evidence. That's what they said, based on evidence. 
is so how they wait, wait, let's wait, let's wait. Let's not talk more about the story yet. Let's okay. let's get the rest of the stuff out of the way. So it's about what is it? It's like five. It's five hours pretty much five minutes, hours. Now. Yep. Yeah. It's five hours and eight minutes long, so it's not too long. I'd say it's pretty easy to follow. I mean, it's just like your regular. If you like crime drama, you're probably gonna. This is gonna be up your alley. Yeah, and if for anybody. Apparently, there's a lot of people who are into like this stuff, uh, taking a look at cases, and like yeah, like cold case police files. cases. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like people just on the internet like to do this. So for anybody who's into that kind of thing, this would be up your alley as well. Um, I mean, I found it interesting. I was kind of intrigued at parts of it. Um, this one though is definitely like if you've seen um, Making a Murder on yeah, Netflix, that's what I was thinking the whole time. Yeah, it's kind of the same exact premise. Like, you got this dude who, obviously, there's two sides to every story, and that's kind of what they're doing in this as well. They're kind of just looking at this whole case in depth just after the fact. Right. Um, And so this book, like we said, is an Audible original, and it was free for this month in September. Um, But if you wanted to just buy it, it's $8. Um. I wouldn't recommend buying it for eight dollars, not in the least. I mean, I don't think it's it's not bad. It's just for me, this is not what I want to be listening to when I go to dive into a book. Right. And there's some people, though, this would probably be right up their alley. I just don't think. Right. Yeah. I just don't think I would choose to do this, like to listen to a nonfiction story like this on a regular basis. I'm not even a big nonfiction fan, period. So. I mean, to I think I talked about it a little bit already, but to me, this really felt like a podcast more than like a book. Sure, and this could have been a really good podcast because now they said in there, so each chapter was, they basically put it as each chapter was also separate. Like they separated them more apparently, but it would have done better, like you said, as like eight podcast episodes versus yeah. one book. Like that would have actually made it probably even better a little bit more interesting um plus they did the w- this weird thing where like for chapter six or something they introduced themselves differently it wasn't just like chapter six the title it was like chapter six the title hi i'm whatever whatever like they reintroduced themselves all over again i was like and, and maybe this was, was going to be a podcast and then they like sold it to amazon or something i, I don't know well, and that could be. And I mean, good for them. I mean, that's not a bad way to get this out there, obviously, by putting it on Audible. Um, but uh, yeah, for me, this is not really the kind of content that I would choose to be consuming. So, so I mean, I, I would say, though, like if you like like crime, like any like if you like any of that stuff, I'd say this is probably a good listen for you. Sure. But if if. Because to me, I I have like if because I have like podcast time that I listen to stuff, and then I have like designated book time to listen to stuff, and like this in my designated book time just doesn't make any sense for me. Because I don't right. I don't know. I, I want like a story with with you know I don't, I don't know like deeper characters with lots of growth instead of just a lot of facts kind of being thrown at you. Sure. So I don't know. What I mean, you yeah. say, Ryan? I just I think you kind of hit the nail on the head on that one. one. Um. If you're into this kind of stuff, crime, and uh, even if you're into, like, uh, fiction crime stories, this might be right up your alley. Because, like, I don't know, our mom likes to listen to a lot of oh, crime yeah. mom, stuff. Mom would she, love it. It's right, she, so she would like this. Right. She would probably really like this. So I would say, yeah, if you're into that kind of stuff, crime podcasts and those kind of things, this will be right up your alley. This just, for me, was not. And I would not recommend spending $8 on it. That's for sure. No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't pay for it that much either, but yeah. I mean, I thought I did think it was interesting. I mean, I'll say that, but like making a murderer was more interesting because it was like a TV show. This might be done better if it was like an actual documentary on where I can see the things they were seeing and all that stuff. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I so. agree. But so. so should we yeah, pass the spoiler wall now, and we'll yeah, just we'll just and you could you could basically tell me what happens. Yeah, well, and we'll just kind of briefly talk through this one. I don't. How far did you listen to it? I listened to. I think I got. I pretty much got to. They were like 
they were like doing the audio recording of the case, you know, and they're like talking about like how they had really no evidence to like pin like to actually put him there. It was just all speculative, pretty much. Oh, so did you not get very far into it? No, I really or didn't. Is that... Oh, okay. I, I for everybody wondering, I kind of rushed Bo because I have to go back to work. So, and I'm, my schedule is going to be weird. So, I was like, we got to do another episode to get ahead a little bit. So, <laughs> I rushed him through this one. But I think this is it, like to me, it's fine because like this is a true thing. It's not like I needed to know the intricacies of the story. Right. To really, that to is, really yeah. give a judgment call on it, and I'm mean, sure. Okay, fine. Write me, a, write me an email. And be like, Bo's a fucking poser. Fine, do it. Bring <laughs> it. Yeah, please, please do. Yeah, and I'll read it. I'll read it all out. And I, I admit, I didn't, I didn't fully listen to this one, so maybe I am totally wrong. And it's for everybody. And it's the best book of all time. No, it's not. <laughs> okay, then. you're in. I finished it. So, um, okay, so basically, like this. What this is, is exactly what I was kind of saying. If you've seen Making a Murder, it's a very similar thing. This dude is accused of murdering this woman. However, the only things that they're basing this off of are that the woman in question was seen on CCTV cameras going to work. So they saw her on like three or four or like, I can't remember what it was. We'll call it eight. I think it was eight CCTV cameras caught glimpses of her walking to work from like the bus stop. And they had the CCTV camera of her on the bus. So they know she made it that far. They saw her on these eight CCTV cameras. But then they have two other shots. So there's 10 total shots. But the last two are very, very inconclusive. Like one is like super far away and you can't really tell who the person is they were just basing it on oh a person walked around the corner in a blue jacket or whatever so that's her and based on that they said what then happened is she walked into their office building and this man in question grabbed her and drug her down to the basement and killed her and then there's some other stuff that happened where he like walked home in the middle of the day and then he brought his car back and then he had to leave in his car on like a long trip so they're like well obviously he shoved her in his trunk and then he on his long trip because his long trip ended up taking him like two hours more than it should have they're like obviously he buried her her body out there in the woods problem with all of this is there is no physical evidence to back any of it apparently the police never found anything in the dude's car they never found anything in the basement of the building that like would say yes they were both down there at the time nothing but somehow they presented the prosecution presented this story to their to the jury and the jury was like yep he did it and so he was convicted well, and put in I prison. thought it, I thought it's cuz they just have to have a majority right not a not a unanimous decision Correct. I feel like that probably played part in it. The difference too, so I did learn something from this book. So like in in the United States and like in the in England and the UK, most parts of the UK, uh, the majority decision is you have twelve jurors and you need ten verse ten to two. So ten people have to agree that he's guilty, and if if two people say no, he's innocent. Doesn't matter. That we're we're saying that's the majority. In Scotland, it's 15 jurors, and you only need eight to seven odds, and that is terrifying. So oh, yeah, so like a little over half, barely over half. Yeah, so it's so you're basically you could be, and this this was one of those cases. It was eight to seven, so you they were almost split down the middle. But in Scotland, that's all you need to convict someone. So. He was convicted because eight people thought he was guilty. So now he's been in prison for like eight years. And right. But he swears up and down. He did not do this. And a lot of the things that these journalists dug up are very intriguing things that do go in his favor. However, we could only be getting one side of the story. I don't know. I mean, <laughs> that's the problem with uh, with a lot of these things is they're not. I mean, 
these people were making it sound like they were sharing both sides of the story, but we don't know if that's the case for sure. Um, the stuff they shared is very compelling for that dude that he's innocent. But for all I know, some police officer would be like, no, nah, man, look, we found all these things. They're not telling you that part. Like, <laughs> Yeah, and that's what some of the reviews I saw said that they were really biased. Sure, and, I, and I mean, they kind of were. enough to even say. Now, granted, that that's how it is with anything. I mean, any of these kind of nonfiction, even uh, making a murderer could be very considered very, very biased because you're only getting the story from one side. So this is the same way. However, the stuff that they were saying was very intriguing. Like um, the the evidence they used as saying he was in the basement and they he killed her down there is because they brought in like corp whatever they called corpse dogs or something that are supposed to smell death and one of the dogs there was two dogs one of them went nuts in the basement so they were like oh see he killed someone right here and then th that same dog went nuts when it smelled the trunk of his car oh see he he had her dead body in here even though they didn't find anything in the trunk so, and they never found the body either right no, they still have never found the body. So, and they've searched the woods where they, they say he buried her. And the, the thing about the whole that I thought was interesting is they're like, no, he clearly did it. But he, when he traveled up there and he took, he had that extended amount of time, he was traveling up to this other town to go like look over some things at the school. And the Police contacted these people that he met with after the fact, and they were like, no, he was pretty clean, and, you know, he wasn't, like, dirty or any of this stuff. So people were like, no, there's absolutely no way you could drag a body out in the woods and bury it and not get, like, dirty or... <laughs> yeah, there's no possible way. Right, so... I mean, and they, and they talked about, too, that, like, even if he was... Even if, like, let's say, let's say he did it and he tried to get away with it, he was like the Houdini of it because there's no evidence at all. You're right. That's yeah, and that was the whole thing. Is they were like, look, you know, a lot of these things you're claiming he did. So they're claiming that he he killed her in the basement of their work office, and then he hid her body down there until he could go back and get his car, and then he moved her body from under the stairs to his car. They were like, look, we have. You're saying the last time you saw this girl on camera was 8.50 or whatever. And then um, there were witnesses that know that that dude was in their office building at 9 o'clock on, like, on the dot, 9 o'clock. So they're saying within 10 minutes, you're saying he took her down there, killed her, and hid her body. And then came back upstairs in 10 minutes. And the, the narrators in this do a pretty good point. They're like, you know, you'd think 10 minutes is forever. But they were like, when you're actually doing something and focusing on something, 10 minutes goes by in the blink of an eye. Yeah, it so does. there's very little chance that he could do that and do it cleanly and then be back upstairs. Like, <laughs> hmm. I mean, but a lot of it was it was intriguing. Um, I did find some of it very interesting that the prosecution was able to use the last two clips of the CCTV as evidence. But when these journalists took that same CCTV to an expert to review them, the expert was like, absolutely not. I wouldn't use these as evidence because they're too far away. You cannot tell that it was her. And um, – also, apparently CCTV can be off uh, – the timestamps can be off as far as plus or minus one minute. So this that expert – make a big difference actually. It makes a huge difference. Did you say it does or doesn't? It does, yeah. No, like oh. one minute could totally change everything. Right, and that's what this guy pointed out because he said, look, from this camera to this camera, we should have seen her within like – it was something like 10 seconds or 12 seconds. He said this clip that we're seeing could be from a minute before she even got there. So Oh, that, shit. I didn't even think about that. Yeah, they're saying that might not even be her that we're saying walked around that corner. But you got, you know, whoever 
pulled the tape, said, nope, that's her right there. And then something else they never looked into is like uh, shortly after she supposedly rounded this last corner, um, this blue car or whatever, it like sped off and it turned the wrong way down the road and like peeled out in the middle of the road and took off. And they were like, did anybody look into that car? And apparently the police didn't really look into it at all, which it could have it could have been nothing. It could have had everything to do with it. So I was like, dang, that's crazy that they just kind of <laughs> didn't even follow through. But you said they don't really come to a conclusion at the end, though. No, no, they don't come to any kind of conclusion at the end. Basically, the whole case is still it's still open kind of at this not really open um but I mean, still, he's in prison <laughs> right he's in prison but what they're trying to do is like they're trying to shed light on it to the point where somebody would reopen it um they said at the very least he should not be in prison like they could have right. convicted him but he should not be sitting in prison because there's no solid evidence to convict him Right. And I thought that was interesting. And I also was like, well, that's terrifying because – Yeah, these always scare me too. It's like, oh my god. And the biggest, the biggest reason that they pretty much straight up convicted him and he was the first one that they um, – basically the first suspect they had is because he was – he was married I think and he started basically cheating on his wife with this woman mm-hmm. and then – he like basically they were also having a relationship like that he wasn't supposed to be having so i heard about this part yeah and so there's like text messages and stuff and then um they were like dating basically like living together and then like they like broke up so everybody was like oh well obviously then he killed her because of this and it, it was like uh in the prosecution's favor because like after she disappeared, it took like a week, I think before they um, brought him in, I think for questioning or something. And uh, it was something to that effect. And either way, like her phone, there was no like messages left on her phone from him basically. Right. He was one of the only ones that didn't text her over that period of time. Which was kind of concerning because, like, so all of her friends had been like, where are you? Where are you? Where are you? But he didn't say anything to her, which was, like, a little weird. Like, they said, well, he didn't he didn't say anything because she was dead. Right, because he knew she was dead. Right. Right. And then I thought that was a little interesting. It's like, oh, that is a little weird. Yeah. I don't even actually know. Did they have her phone now that I'm thinking about it? Did they have her phone? I don't remember. Or were they pulling? They must have been pulling records or something. I think they were pulling records. Yeah, that would make sense. They didn't sense. find her body, right? Why would they have her phone? Yeah, so that was that was very against him. I mean, he had made no phone calls and he had made no sent no text messages to her, even though up to that point he had been texting her like forty plus yeah. times a day, or up to like it was up to like four hundred times a day he would text her. So. They're saying that's really weird that all of a sudden after she is missing, you stop texting her like, (laughs) yeah, that yeah. But he was the only one who had not called and like left her a message like, yeah. Yeah. So he claims it's because he got back together with his wife and his wife said you will have absolutely no contact with this woman. So that's why he supposedly I thought it was weird that his wife wouldn't be on the show. Yeah, I think she refused to be on there. And then the woman who's missing, uh, her parents refused to be on the show because they think 100% that the dude is guilty. His parents right. obviously think he is 100% innocent. So um, the most interesting thing I took away from this book and the thing that I like about stories like this and like making a murderer and stuff is um, just kind of – them talking to like experts about things that's the stuff i find very intriguing like that they're talking to the expert like the cctv guy and then they were talking to some lady who was basically like they shouldn't have used those dogs either as evidence because one dog said yes the other one didn't say anything 
So, so, so right, so you would that would cancel them out, right? It's like oh well, you then. would think. And I think they even said supposedly the dogs aren't supposed to be used anymore, like as solid evidence, because they're so oh. easy, like they're so easy to fool, basically. Huh. But the it just, prosecution these just, these just scare me because it's like oh my oh, god, man. I feel it's like terrifying. it would be it would be so easy to get railroaded. Right. Yeah, especially like. <clears throat> yeah. It, it, yeah, that's the biggest thing is it was it was kind of scary. Yeah, it was super terrifying. Well, this was going to be a turbo episode, but somehow we're at 25 minutes. Oh, well, I, we can be done. I yeah, I didn't think I had a whole lot to say about it. I guess. I and then you just can't you dude you you opened up like a butterfly and so much came <laughs> out. I mean, like I said, I found it intriguing. I just, again, this is not the kind of content I would want to consume on a regular basis. Yeah, so. and I, I'm gonna have to agree. Like for me, if I'm listening to a book, this is not what I want. But that doesn't mean it's bad. Yeah, that's yeah, that's a good point. So yeah, I think we're good. Got anything else yeah. to say? No, I think we'll wrap this one up there. Uh, what are we? What are we doing next time? So next time is The Hobbit. All right. And then we are doing – it is another – it'll be the Mistwick School of Music. Right, which is another uh, Amazon original. So if anybody right. if anybody hears this right now, go pick up that one for free before like October 4th is when the new episodes will come out – or the new – sorry, the new books for Audible Original will come out. So – Correct. So, yeah. Hope to see you then, everybody. Yeah. So we will, uh, yeah, catch you guys in the next one.